Hans Michael and Summer Hess has been working on a number of film projects of late. He is a composer and he is on the line with me now. Hello, sir. Hello. How are we doing? Good, good. So uh, we've got you uh, on, on Skype to have a little bit of a chat. I know recently you've been working on the film Clownface. Uh, this has been doing great things. And you've already started winning awards for this particular piece of work. Yeah, actually the awards is even go back to the time um, from previous projects. Mm-hmm. Especially when I did um, a short film called um, Ex de Miurgus. So that went pretty well. And then I started, well, let's just start putting my films to uh, awards. And then after that, I started putting as well was Carnival of Sorrows. Mm-hmm. Which actually Carnival of Sorrows was the one that lead, led to Clown Face. And as a consequence um, to um, sustain as well now. So you've done Sustain too. So, okay. So give us a bit of your background. How did you come to film composing in the first place? Film composing wasn't the first option. It was, uh, I started actually as a classical guitarist. Mm-hmm. So I did a BA in, in music performance and classical guitar because I always love a lot the, the sound of, of the instrument mm-hmm. and um, its um, abilities. Um, so I want to do a degree on that. I was in the car with my sister and she was listening to a, a, a tape mm-hmm. and the tape was actually the soundtrack of A. Morricone for The Mission. Uh-huh. And I remember there was a particular um, cue that um, I think was the second of the, the track of the album and that really stuck in my mind, you know, because it was a very melancholic and, and repetitive and beautiful. And that was something that I remember that quite struck on, on me, but I just knew it was just music for a film, you know. Mm-hmm. And then as I was into composition, I joined bands and things, just being self-taught. Um, I started to grow the interest, you know. I like another soundtracks that were very influential was uh, The Braveheart. Mm-hmm. I remember listening a lot while I was doing my degree. And I and then I got others as well. Independence Day was another one that you know they were talking like in the nineties. That was when I was doing my first BA degrees. Mm-hmm. Then remember, you know, like I like listening a lot to um, guitar concertos, so you know the involvement with the orchestra. Mm-hmm. And then later on, much later than I thought, like you no, know, I think um, I want to pursue this career. You know, it looks great. Um, you get to, to use the orchestra. Um, I was fascinated by music technology as well because I, were, I am from that generation where actually I saw computers becoming powerful. I yep. remember that. Mm-hmm. And computers that could play music that sounded like real music rather than computer games, which was yeah a, a bit yeah, sort of... Although the computer games, uh, one, one thing, that's a good point actually. I do like games. I don't play I rarely play now, but I was very into that mm-hmm. you know, at a young age, and I love the soundtracks. I thought the soundtracks were amazing, and when I, when people were sort of slagging them off, it's just because, of course, you know that the, the, the sound banks that they had at the time, it was what they could use with it. You mm-hmm. know, so it was an eight beat. So I think it was still extraordinary music, but it's just the the, the, the timbre, because of the timbre, it was like being receiving lots of prejudice but uh, I'm a very fan of video game music so I'm glad nowadays it has found its place so it's one of the most profitable um, you know in the, our car- careers media composers you know like mm-hmm. they I think in the UK he reaches billions of pounds you know mm-hmm. uh, every year so it's uh, it, it's big you know, they use nowadays. They don't use a beat sounds. They use <laughs> real orchestras. You know, mm-hmm. and and through what can be done with the amount of data that's moved around these days, you can have a full sound without mm-hmm. all that the uh, MIDI files creating some of the yeah, most irritating sometimes music in the world. But still, that had to be composed by somebody. So, I mean, what brought you to the UK in the first place? The UK was like this. I I got this obsession of. Since I was a teenager, that I want to do my postgraduate studies in music abroad. Mm-hmm. So when the time was coming, I started to search. Um, in my initial 
idea was to go to the United States, but of course it was, and I think still very expensive. Then I thought, well, I have an European passport, so why not Britain? Because I speak English, uh, although at the time it was more American accent. <laughs> and then I started to prepare myself for it. And then I remember that I did a lot of searches and I found about the city of Bristol. And the city of Bristol, I mean, I remember when I, I, know, when I read Bristol, it was like Bristol, that name is ringing the bell <laughs> somehow. It was interesting, I didn't know why and i still don't know why it rang the bell at the time mm -hmm. it was interesting because okay damn it was good it was one intense year when i finished i also had this because i had this ah i want to do you know the ma and then i want to do a phd yeah so i ended up doing a phd in film uh, musicology uh which was something that oh, it was much more tougher than i thought <laughs> because um, it involved, you know, lots of research. And I had a vision about that that was a little bit <laughs> naive at the time. Uh, so it was really tough because I had to concentrate a lot on the research and uh, I ended up not being able during that period. I couldn't be working that much in the industry. Mm -hmm. That's why when sometimes people ask me, oh, so when did you start it? I said, actually, for my second renaissance, <laughs> which it began more in 2014. Well, you've been working on some great Midlands movies. Clown Face is out there now. Sustain is on the verge of release. And you must be proud to be part of these. And I know talking to the director of Sustain, how pleased they are with the way in which the soundtrack comes together. And uh, Troy was telling me he actually watched the film through with none of the dialogue, just the music, and how that had really brought the film to life for him. Yeah. Well, for me, it was also uh, another pleasure because um, I ended up coming to this project through a reference because Alex Bourne mm -hmm. from Clownface, um, he suggested me to Troy and Dave because they were looking for someone else. And he was trying to, you know, to, to to put me in. And then I talked to them. And then, of course, you know, always a new director is, uh, it's a new thing, you know, because you, you, you want to know if the chemistry is going to work well. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing. I think when you get into a project, you know, whether or not you're going to get along and people will, you know, the filmmakers will be able to to communicate well. Because sometimes I had very few uh, bad experiences. So, of course, for me, it was, okay, how's that going to happen? Then I was very glad it was, you know, working with uh, Dave and Troy mm -hmm. was excellent. And, uh, well, talking about that, about the effect of the music, I have to say, yeah, I mean, I'm always very proud of, of uh, how these things happen, mm -hmm. I will say, because, um, well, it's um, it's something that comes back to when I did music, the reason I did music was because um, I was always very passionate about, passionate, I would say, no, I would say intrigued mm -hmm. by the communication of power the music has. So, um, for me, it was the same thing, but that I will be able to do it in film music. So, you know, of course, when I when I was doing the cues, I wanted to just get a better translation of the story, mm -hmm. of the visuals into the music. And also, you know, vision from uh, Dave of what he wanted to come across. So um, I think that's what um, film music has to do very well. You know, it's just, translating those metaphors because mm -hmm. you, you're going to watch this you're watching a movie and then you're like okay well, well what does it that what does that mean you know in terms of music and we all have different listening experiences and from those listening experiences you're going to add meaning to that mm -hmm. well the, the soundscape of a film is vitally important as you say to telling that story that is going to be the case with sustain when we see it in clown face it is already out there where can people go to find out more about you and your music people can go to my uh, website so that's um, hans michael anselmo has.com or even easier you can go to spotify as well so go to hans michael has h-e-s-s and I'm there already doing my release and doing lots of other releases now of this uh, feature films I worked mm -hmm. and other projects as well. And uh, yeah, people will be able to find a lot about 
more of my sounds there as well. Hans, thank you for joining us. Thank you for sharing your music. We look forward to hearing more from you as you continue your film career. Thank you very much.